Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's live broadcast, Getting to Know Your BD Veritor System for Rapid Detection of SARS-CoV-2. I'm Alexis Krauss of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is brought to you by LabRoots and sponsored by BD. For more information about our sponsor, please visit their website at bd.com. So let's get started. I would like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click on the Submit button. If you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, report your problem by clicking on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. I'd like to now introduce our presenter, David Barrett, IDS Business Int uh, Integrator, GPOs. And for the Q&A portion, we will welcome David Carey, the Global Product Manager for Point of Care at BD. For a complete biography on our presenter, please visit the Biography tab at the right side of your screen. David, welcome, sir. You may now begin your presentation. Thank you, Alexis, I appreciate that. And thank you to all of you for joining us. We're looking forward to talking to you today about the BD Veritor system uh, and especially around the COVID testing. Just to go over a very brief agenda, we're going to start out talking about the role of antigen testing and what sets this testing apart from some of the other testing methodologies that you may have heard about. We'll then go into talking about the Veritor system for the rapid detection of SARS-CoV-2 or for COVID. Uh, we'll talk about some keys to successful testing and how to make sure that you're getting the best result possible out of this system. We'll then move on to talking about batch testing and what that is, what the workflow looks like, and when it's most appropriate for you. And finally, we'll wrap up talking about some digital resources, some online learning resources that we have available to you. So we're going to go ahead and just jump right in, but before we even start talking about antigen testing, uh, I, I just want to make sure that we all get you a little bit introduced to BD. Uh, BD is a global company that manufactures and distributes products that uh, touch patient care all the way from the collection of a specimen through administration of medications, all the way up through reporting. And when it comes down to COVID-19 during this pandemic, this little graphic that I'm showing you here uh, shows just the, the vast array of solutions that we have for our customers from collecting specimens for COVID testing to instrumentation that actually does the testing um, all the way up to uh, medication management and IV pumps and catheters and uh, drug dispensing cabinets for patients that are hospitalized, uh, all the way through getting the, the report out uh, into the, uh, the patient electronic reporting systems and uh, making sure that these patients are treated properly the right way at the right time. So uh, we're focusing more today on the point of care testing, as you can see highlighted in the orange box, or referred to also as antigen testing. Now before we start talking about this antigen testing, I'd just like to make sure that we're clear on what this is. Uh, you've heard about a couple of different types of tests, probably through the media. You hear about molecular testing, also referred to as PCR testing, and then you hear about the antigen testing or rapid testing or point of care. It has multiple different names. And as we talk about what this testing looks like and how they're different, I'd like to use the, the example of a patient that has a SARS-CoV-2 exposure. And you can see my little graphic of a virus there. And as a patient is exposed to that virus, uh, that virus is go going to begin to replicate in the patient. And as more and more virus uh, becomes present in the patient, we refer to that as viral load. Now, viral load is essential when it comes down to what type of testing is going to be used. And I like to use the example of a, if, if our patient, if our body is a great big soccer field and the virus is a tennis ball 
And if I give you a task of going out onto a soccer field with a bucket and saying, if you fill this bucket with tennis balls, then you will be successful. And if there are only four or five or six tennis balls out on that field, you're going to have a hard time detecting those. Well, what molecular testing does, PCR testing does, is it actually amplifies those tennis balls. So instead of having five or six tennis balls out there, we now have hundreds of thousands of tennis balls, and it's going to be really easy for us to fill the bucket. So this is where PCR testing comes into play very early on in the infection cycle. And PCR testing, since it amplifies or gives us multiple copies of what we're looking for, um, it can pick up a test or a positive result very, very early. Uh, however, today we're talking about antigen testing. And what a couple of things differentiate antigen testing from PCR testing. First of all, PCR or molecular testing requires very uh, expensive, specialized equipment. It requires a different degree of training and expertise. Um, it, it's a very complex test that does take longer. This is the one that you hear about when people say, oh, I got tested, and they said that I'll have my result back within a couple of days. That's because they're getting a PCR test. So today, as we talk about antigen testing, what antigen testing does is it looks at the actual number of targets, the actual amount of virus that is in the patient at the time of the specimen collection. So now, if we go back to our tennis ball analogy, instead of having to amplify the number of tennis balls, we're looking for hundreds of thousands of tennis balls that are there because that's what the patient has, has grown up through the replication cycle of the virus. And that's when the, uh, the antigen test is going to pick it up. So with that, an antigen test is going to pick up or is designed to pick up a positive a few days after a patient be, or within a few days of a patient becoming symptomatic. And as that viral load begins to drop off, then it's going to be more likely that a patient will be negative. Now, one thing we want to make sure of is you've also heard about antibody testing. Now, the antibodies come along after an infection after the immune system has done its job and has cleared out the virus from our body, we have these antibodies left behind. And we are not doing antibody testing with the Veritor system. Uh, we just want to make sure that everybody is clear that today we're talking about antigen or looking for the presence of the virus itself, not antibody, which is the thing that is responsible for clearing the virus. So now that we're clear on what antigen testing is and when it's appropriate, let's go in and get you introduced to the BD Veritor Plus system. So as you look at the picture of this BD, the BD Veritor Plus, I'm, I want you to think about simplicity. You'll notice on there that there's only one button that can be used on the entire reader. And there's a very, uh, a very simple screen on it. So even as you look at this, it's simple. And if you walk away with one thing that you remember about the BD Veritor Plus, it is simplicity. So what this provides you as an antigen test, it gives you the ability to get a digital readout, optically or, or uh, digitally read result in 15 minutes for SARS-CoV-2. It also simplifies your testing by giving you a very easy streamlined workflow, which we'll talk about, all in a reader that does not have multiple buttons, keyboards, any kind of maintenance or calibration required. Everything is as simple as can be. I do also want to point out at this time that you will hear me interchangeably use the words SARS-CoV-2, COVID, COVID-19. We're all talking about the same virus uh, that is responsible for the pandemic that we're in today. So let's go ahead and get you introduced to the SARS-CoV-2 or the COVID kit that can be used for the Veritor system. This kit is designed to detect the SARS-CoV-2 antigen in nasal swabs. We'll talk more about the specimen collection, but this is a nasal collection, not a nasal pharyngeal. And we'll talk about the difference between those in a moment. It is designed for use within the first five days of symptom onset. It is designed for use with the nasal swabs only. 
and it does provide you an incubation time of 15 to 20 minutes and only about one minute of sample prep time. And one of the great things about our emergency use authorization from the FDA on this kit is that it can be used in any CLIA environment from high to moderately complex and even CLIA waived environments. So as you get your Veritor kit for SARS-CoV-2, we'll just talk about some of the things that are in the box. You're going to find 30 individually wrapped test cartridges or cassettes, and you can see a little picture of that off to the lower right-hand side of this slide. You're going to get 30 pre-filled reagent tubes that are going to be used for processing the specimen. We'll introduce you to those in a minute. You're also going to get 30 nasal swabs. So these are the swabs that will be used for your specimen collection. You'll receive a set of positive and negative controls. And you'll receive a document that shows where you can go download your package insert electronically. We are not including the package insert in paper form in these kits. We provide you with, a, with quick reference cards for collecting a sample as well as for running a test. What you do not get in the kit is the BD Veritor Plus Analyzer itself. That needs to be acquired separately. Uh, you, we do not provide you with the gloves and any other appropriate PPE or a timer for the kit. But just about everything that you need with the exception of the reader itself is included in this kit. So we'll move on and we'll talk about how a specimen is run. And you're, you, this, uh, this graphic that you see here is taken right from the quick reference card. So we'll talk briefly about how to collect a specimen. Now we talked earlier and said that the, this is a nasal collection, not a nasal pharyngeal. The nasal pharyngeal collection are the ones that you hear people talk about, the nightmare that they had to go through when they went and had their their test run and that swab went all the way back and they felt like it was touching their brain. That's a nasopharyngeal swab. This is only a nasal swab. So you're going up into about mid-terminate, about an inch and a half or two inches up in the nostril. And you're going to insert that swab into the nostril and uh, go around 360 degrees all the way inside the nostril, rotating the swab while you're collecting it. And then you're going to move over to the other nostril with the same swab and do the same thing. That swab then can come back to the testing site and you will take the, uh, the reagent vial that is shown there in step two. You're going to pop off the, uh, the little yellow cap and you're going to insert the swab all the way into the bottom of the vial where the liquid resides and you're going to plunge the swab up and down, mixing it around for about 15 seconds. And then when you remove the swab, the walls of this tube are flexible. So you can pinch those walls together against the shaft of the swab so that when you pull that swab out, it wrings all of the remaining fluid out of the swab and remains in the reagent vial. At this point, you can snap down the, the little uh, dropper cap that's on there and you will invert that dropper the reagent vial with the dropper cap and dispense three drops of solution into the well that is marked with the little icon that shows three drops at this point you'll set your timer and you will let this sample incubate for 15 minutes at the end of the 15 minute incubation period you'll simply turn on your reader your reader will go through a quick self-test, and then it will give you the instructions for what you need to do next. And that is simply insert the test cartridge into the side of the reader where you can see the cartridge there in the picture. It'll take about three seconds with a countdown to give you a result, and then it will provide you with your result. It will say COB2 negative or COB2 positive, depending on if the patient is negative or positive. Really could not be any simpler. So with that, we're going to talk about just some steps to ensure that your testing is as successful as possible. 
As a laboratory and myself, I always like to make sure that people understand that a quality specimen will give you a quality result. And this system, the, the, uh, the Veritor system itself, as well as the COVID-2 uh, assay, have a very high degree of accuracy. Uh, we actually compared 226 nasal swabs between the Veritor and a PCR, that molecular method that we talked about at the very beginning, to determine the accuracy. And what we found with our positive percent agreement claims and our negative percent agreement claims is that when, a, when the system reports out a positive result, you can be assured that that is truly a positive result. We show that there's no cross reactivity between other human coronaviruses or flu tests or flu viruses or any other respiratory viruses. However, despite any of those performance claims, uh, like I said just a moment ago, the, uh, the test system is only as good as the person collecting the specimen and the person running the test. So there are just a few key steps that we want to make sure we touch on. We want to make sure that you're following the instructions for use specific to the SARS-CoV-2 test. Now, the Veritor system is able to run flu testing, RSV testing, and group A strep testing. And if you know how to use any of those tests, that does not mean that you know how to use the SARS-CoV-2 test. So we need you to follow the instructions that are specific to that test. We also want to make sure that we are following the instructions very closely for specimen collection and then making sure that we follow the procedure steps exactly as they are written on the quick reference guide. Now just a couple of points that, uh, that come up that we want to make sure of is only use the, the components that come in the kit for the SARS-CoV test or COVID-2 test. So we want to make sure that we're not using any of the other reagent vials from any other kit. If you have flu kits sitting there on your shelf, we want to make sure that you're not using the reagent vials from a flu kit. You're only using the reagent vials from the SARS-CoV-2 kit. We also want to make sure that we are only using the nasal swabs that come with the kit. You may have other swabs, Dacron swabs or con uh, cotton tip swabs sitting around your, uh, at your facility, and we want to make sure that you're not using those. Only use the swabs that come in a kit. Those are the approved collection swabs for this test. We also want to make sure that you are processing your specimens within an hour of collection. And then one of the last items is we want to make sure that you are incubating for the full period of time, 15 to 20 minutes. Do not read before the incubation time. And then lastly, we want to make sure that you are letting the reader do the, the reading of the test for you. It's really easy to look at the test and think that you see a line and that you can call it a positive or a negative, but this system is designed to be read digitally with the Veritor reader, and we want to make sure that you're letting that reader do the work that it's supposed to do and that we are not reading those visually. All right, so let's just talk a little bit about batch testing and where that comes into play. So the Veritor reader actually has two different modes of reading. There is a mode called Analyze Now mode, which is the one that I just went through with you, where you'll incubate your cartridge and then pop it in the reader and the reader will read the test for you and give you a result. There's another mode called Walk Away mode. Now, walkaway mode is great for situations where maybe you have a lot going on that you're taking care of uh, different patients, or if you're in a long-term care facility, you're taking care of their various needs of residents, and you cannot sit and be tied to the reading of the results. Well, walkaway mode allows you to, once you insert the, you inoculate the test strip with the three drops, you can put the reader into walk away mode. It tells you how to do it right on the display just by pressing the button twice. And then it will instruct you to insert the cartridge. And when you do that, it starts the countdown timer of 15 minutes for you. And then whether you're there or not, it will read the test 
and it will have the result there waiting for you when you get back to the reader. Now that system doesn't, uh, or that methodology doesn't always work the best in very busy facilities where they're doing multiple tests at a time. Uh, maybe you're, you're on a kind of facility where you're getting five to 10 or 15 tests at a time, and that's where batch testing really comes into play. And batch testing allows you to set up multiple specimens all at the same time and read them in a very fast fashion. Now, we have provided a, a work card, a document, similar to what you see on the screen here at bdverator.com, uh, that gives you the way to do batch testing with up to 10 tests. And you can process all 10 tests within 26 minutes very easily. And basically what we're going to do is each step of the process will be taken to completion for all 10 of our specimens. So we're going to make sure that we collect all 10 swabs first. And then when we have all 10 of our swabs, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to process all 10 of those swabs into 10 of our reagent vials. And then once all of those reagent vials are processed, then we're going to go sequentially and we're going to apply three drops of the first vial to a reagent cartridge three drops of the second vial to a reagent cartridge, and so on and so forth until we have gotten all the way through our, our, our reagent vials, and all of our cartridges have now been inoculated. At this point, we can start our timer for 15 minutes, and when that 15 minutes elapses, then we can read the first cartridge and record the result, read the second cartridge and record the result in a stepwise fashion until we've gone through all 10 cartridges. Now, going back to steps for success, one of the things that we want to make sure of that we're doing is clearly labeling our swabs and our reagent vials and our test cartridges with whatever patient identifier we're using. If it's patient initials, if we have a patient number, uh, we just want to make sure that we're not getting swabs, reagent vials, and cartridges mixed up. But all of this is uh, made very, very clear on the workflow guide that we provided here. And then also, I'm showing you right now a YouTube link that shows you a guide to batch testing, where it takes all of those steps that I just gave you, and it, uh, it shows you in a video fashion how to do those. So you can, um, you can go to the BD YouTube channel and look at this guide to batch testing, or you can just follow this link right here. All right, so moving on, we'll talk a little bit about some of the reporting options. Now, one of the steps that I gave you in the, uh, in the, the process of, of running a test is once you read the test cartridge and you have a result, you record that result. Well, there are a number of ways of doing that, and we're, we'll talk about four different methods that are available to you. So the first one here is manual reporting, and this is probably going to be the one that is satisfactory for most users, where we keep a, a notebook or a, a spreadsheet or anything like this that has the ability to document a patient identifier, what test is being run, and then if it's positive or negative. However, some people prefer to have a printed record. And we do have the ability through the USB port that is on the back of the reader to connect to a small thermal printer. Uh, these thermal printers are available through most distributors. They're available on Amazon.com. And when the reader gives the result, it will also give a digital printout of what that result is, whether it's a COVI-2 positive, COVI-2 negative, if you're running flu, it will say flu A positive or flu A negative, flu B positive, whatever the, the result may be, it'll print out. And then that printed record can be kept with whatever kind of charting method you, ha you may have. The third methodology we have is there is an additional module that can be purchased that just pops right in the front of the Veritor reader that gives you barcode scanning capabilities. And this is referred to as an info scan. And once you're using that, 
you can scan barcodes of uh, user IDs, you can scan barcodes of patient IDs, you can scan the lot numbers on a kit, uh, just about any of the barcodes that you may need to scan, you now have the ability to do so. And with this, if you're using it with the thermal printer, now when the result prints out, you're going to have a user ID on there, you're going to have the patient ID, you're gonna have all of the items on that result, uh, the, re the result printout that you scanned. The other thing that this gives you the ability to do is now you can plug the reader in via that same USB cable to a computer and you can download the database via a CSV file and import that into Excel for manipulation as you need. The last and fourth method of reporting automates the entire process through a software service that we have that's referred to as Synapsis Informatics. And what this does is takes all of the previous steps that we told you about with the barcode scanning and it uploads all of those results into the Synapsis software and then provides you with robust reporting capabilities. One of the nice things about this is that it does streamline the HHS reporting requirements and uh, gives you a, a, a nice record of um, who's running tests, what patients are having tests run on them, uh, what tests are being run, just about anything you can think about with advanced analytics and, and reporting. And your BD representative can provide you with more information on any of these solutions, whether it's the printer or the info scan or the Synapsis Informatics, uh, your BD representative would be able to provide you with information on that. Okay, so we're going to move on now to talking about some digital resources and the online learning that we have available to you. So one of the things as a global company that BD really excels at is providing our customers with online learning platforms. Uh, we make sure that you have everything available to you that you need to be able to have a uh, customized training uh, curriculum or format for any of your uh, groups or, or regardless of the size of group, uh, these resources are updated on a regular basis. So as new information comes out or no, new tools are available, the, uh, the online resources are updated. There are a couple of main websites and we have them right here for you. bd.com forward slash COVID-19 is one site that has a wealth of information about the SARS-CoV-2 testing. Uh, you can also go to bdverator.com and at that site you will find uh, a wealth of information about all of the other things that the BD Verator can do. Now on these sites, one of the other things that you'll have the ability to do is you can watch videos that show you how to properly collect a specimen, watch videos on how to properly run a test, um, any of the documents that we've talked about uh, throughout this presentation are available for download on these sites as well. And then we also have the YouTube channel that we talked about earlier that not only shows you how to do the batch testing, but provides you with other resources as well for uh, training, uh, learning about how to run a test, and, uh, and allowing you to link to those, those videos uh, as you work on your training curriculum. So I provided you one of those links right here, uh, bdverator.com or bdverator.bd.com, sorry, that's been updated. And so you can grab that link and, uh, and use that as one of the resources that's available to you. And then also we wanted to just talk to you briefly about our approach to implementation of this system. So we work very closely with our customers to understand exactly what their needs are uh, because everybody has different training needs. Some people have small groups of, of users, some people have larger groups of users. We work with you and we develop a customized plan that works best for you. Uh, for some people, they are fine with all of the online, re online training resources. For other people, they may need to have train the trainer programs put into place. And so we work with you on all of those things. And then 
As a global company as well, we do provide you with ongoing support post-implementation. So we have an entire group of experts uh, that are dedicated to customer service and customer care. So should you run into problems or issues along the way, then you can just reach out to us and we'll be happy to assist you with whatever those may be. So just a couple of other links here again that you can snag. So those education resources are at bdveritor.bd.com as you can snag this link right here, which has a number of the educational resources for you. as well as this link right here, which is specific to COVID-19 testing, and we'll provide you with everything that we've talked about here today. So just as a final note, there are a couple of disclaimers that we need to make sure that we clarify, that the SARS-CoV-2 test is for use only under the emergency use authorization by the FDA. Uh, that this product has not been FDA cleared or approved, but is authorized by the FDA under that emergency use authorization uh, by authorized laboratories. That this product has been authorized only for the detection of proteins or those antigens from SARS-CoV-2, not for any other viruses or pathogens. And then lastly, the product is only authorized for the duration of the declaration that make the emergency use authorization necessary, and that could be revoked or terminated at any point in time. So with that, that is the end of our presentation, and uh, I think, Alexis, are we going to go ahead and open up to the Q&A portion? Yes, absolutely. So thank you, David Barrett, for that informative presentation. I would also like to now welcome David Carey to join us for the Q&A portion of this webinar. So if you have a question you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen, and we'll answer as many of your questions as we have time for. So let's get started. Our first question is, when should I run the controls that come in the kit? Did we get David Carey on audio or should I yes. be taking you? Can, can you hear me? Oh, there we go, David. Sorry, I wasn't sure whether, which one which one of us you'd like to take that call. Um, there's three, we, we, at BD, we provide three um, guidance uh, lines for use of the controls. Um, really once, whenever you get a new kit lot that comes in, um, if you have a new operator that you're bringing on board, um, and really, and also if there, and the third one, the third qualifier is if there are any internal quality procedures or to internal quality control procedures at your institution that requires you to um, run additional controls. One other thing that I like to just throw out there as well that um, a number of my customers have done is uh, usually you are fine running a, both a positive and a negative control if you get a shipment of boxes that are all the same lot. So you should only have to run your controls for one, uh, for one lot. And what many of my customers have done is uh, if they have extra controls left over, they just throw those in a drawer, and those are great to use for proficiency testing. So like David said, when you're, when you're training a new user, uh, you would have them use those controls as if they were a patient. And if you just hold on to any of your controls, don't discard uh, any unused controls, they're great for those training purposes. Great, thank you so much to you both for that answer. Um, David, I believe you might have mentioned this um, earlier in the presentation, but uh, one question that came up was, can I do an NP swab? Yeah, I can, I can go ahead and take that. So this is not an NP swab, this is a nasal, uh, which is an, a nasopharyngeal swab. Uh, this is a nasal swab only. And um, when, you, when you see the size of the swabs, you would not ever even want to attempt to do a nasopharyngeal swab. The nasopharyngeals are, are very tiny and have a, a flexible tip, and this is a, a larger, more rigid swab. So we want to make sure that 
The, we are only using the approved specimen type, which is a nasal swab in both nostrils. Great, thank you so much for that clarification. Moving on to our next question. Is the Veritor system portable or does it need to stay plugged into the wall? And I'll okay. take this. Okay, there you go, David. Yeah, I'll go ahead and take this one. I, I forgot to mention it. But uh, yeah, one of, the, one of the other very convenient points with the, the Veritor Plus system is that it is portable. It does have a rechargeable battery. So it comes with a, uh, a power cable that will charge the battery when it's plugged in. But if you need to take it with you, you can just unplug it and that battery will stay charged. Uh, the one thing that I will say is that if you are running in that walk away mode that we talked about, the system does require itself to be plugged into the wall, into the, the wall charger while you're in walk away mode because it doesn't want to run the chance of having that battery run down while you're away. Great, thank you so much. Um, our next question that came in, does the same system test for the flu, strep, and RSV? Uh, David, I'll give you this one. Yeah, okay, you, can, you can use the same, the, the same Veritor platform or can run all the assays. You would obviously need the individual kits for flu, AB, uh, group A, strep, and RSV. But the same, the same Veritor instrument can run all three independently. Perfect, David, thank you so much for that. Um, we do wanna remind our audience, you know, any questions that we don't have time for today and those that we aren't able to get to will be addressed by our speakers um, via the contact information that you provided at the time of registration. Um, so let's move on to our next question. Um, what do you do if more than three drops are put in a well or not three full drops, so half falls outside the well, for an example. David, I can take this one. So uh, I, I think the capacity of the well is really gonna, is, is gonna determine that. So I don't think it's possible to put more than three in there. You're gonna kind of fill it up with three. So there's not as much of a problem, except the fact that if you, owe, if you put too much sample in, then there would be a, a concern around not having enough for a repeat if required. Um, if not three, if not full, three full drops in there if you, uh, for some particular reason, some of it fell out of the well. There should be residual uh, extraction reagent in the vial for you to add an additional drop. So let's say you got two and then missed on one, you should, there should be residual material extraction reagent in the vial for you to add uh, additional drop or so to, 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 to get the full amount in there. Great, thank you. Um, so here, here's another one. Um, so just for really clarification, so the controls are swabs, is that correct? That is correct. In the box, there will be a, there are a little foil pouch and there's one that uh, very clearly shows that it is a positive control swab and the other one it is very clearly marked as a negative control swab. And they're processed just like a regular patient swab. So it does, because of that, it does test the, uh, it, it tests the integrity of the full system all the way from processing of the, uh, of the swab in the reagent vial uh, all the way through the reading and reporting out of a result. Great, thank you so much, David, for, for that clarification. Um, we do wanna thank you again, David Barrett and David Carey. Um, do you have any final comments for our audience? Um, David Barrett, I'll go ahead and start with you. Yeah, the only final comment that I would have is that uh, BD is here for you and is available to help with any of the questions that you may have. We do have a team of experts that um, is at our 1-800 number that is available to answer any additional questions. And uh, as Alexa said, any questions that we didn't get to today uh, will be uh, sent, the answers will be sent out uh, later after this call. And for me, just thank everyone for attending today. Uh, and as well, if, if there's any more information you wanna know about the BD Veritor, um, 
we're constantly updating our web page, the, the, the microsite that's dedicated to Veritor, bdveritor.com. Um, so there'll be new content loaded there on a pretty regular basis. So if there's anything um, that you didn't see on the, on the webinar today, I'm sure there's extra material that you can find on, on that website as well. Thank you so much to, to you both. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Again, like we mentioned, questions that we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by our speakers via the contact information that you provided at the time of registration. So please feel free to keep those questions coming in. We would like to once again, thank David Barrett for his presentation and David Carey for joining us for that Q&A portion. We would also like to thank Labyrinth and our sponsor, BV, for underwriting today's educational webcast. You can view the webinar on demand. Labyrinths will alert you via email when it's available for replay. That's all for now. Stay safe, stay healthy, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.